But I – first, I've got to make a statement, because you talked about it. It starts at the top down. When – and I want to take a shot at my friends on the other side of the aisle. When you vilify people who are regulating the system so that taxpayers don't have to pick up the pieces or that the depositors of a bank don't have to pick up the pieces or shareholders don't have to pick up the pieces, but you vilify those regulators and you make them out to be the bad guys in the system, then they become the bad guys in the system. So there are philosophical differences between my side of the aisle and the need for regulation so that the taxpayer doesn't pick up all the pieces when everything goes to hell, and wanting to keep the markets completely free so that the guy can make the last obscene buck. So that's my statement for the record. Now, let's just talk about a couple things. I think you're right on the money with young people, inexperienced, ultimately wanting to go into the business, you know, to go to investment bankers, et cetera, being the regulators in the first place. They're going to be nervous, and you're right about, you know, picking some people who've seen this stuff before. This is not rocket science finding a Ponzi scheme. You found it in four hours, and I know you were looking for it. But when it is too good to be true, then you stop and you take a breath and say, what's going on here? My questions are, you went to the media and you had stories written about this. You have supposedly sophisticated investment fund managers who are investing into this. What happened with them? Why didn't they see this? I think one big reason is the feeder funds were preying on the people that they were close to. Ponzi schemes are, above all, an affinity fraud. We saw that in the United States where Mr. Madoff was Jewish. He preyed on the Jewish community. But that's all he did here. Overseas, he used different connections, and he actually took royal families to the cleaners, European aristocracy and high-born families, and the nouveau riche. So I think the losses in Europe will actually be bigger than they are here in the U.S., but they're going to be more hidden because a lot of that money invested from overseas was untaxed money in offshore jurisdictions, and they can't admit the losses or else their host nation authorities will come and investigate them. So there are reasons for this failure. But shouldn't – here's my question. I mean, you were looking for this. I think, you know, I look at your timeline, your chart here, which is very good, and you were asked by Rampart Investment to try to figure out what this – you know, split strike strategy, which in my opinion is a bunch of baloney. You know, it's like the black box that everybody uses for a Ponzi scheme. But you were asked, and you discovered this, shouldn't those investment managers have seen something that just didn't smell right? But they were paid so much to look the other way. Let me explain the fee scheme in the Madoff Ponzi. Please. Thank you. Mr. Madoff was purporting to only be taking commissions from this product. Even though he was a hedge fund manager who usually would take a 1 percent management fee and 20 percent of the profits, he was so generous of a human being that he was offering those fees to the feeder funds to lure in new victims. And so let me explain the fee structure to you. To deliver 12 returns, he needed to be earning 16 percent growth because there were 4 percent in fees. And he was passing the 4 percent in fees along to the feeder funds and keeping only a smidgen for himself. And so those feeder funds were incentivized not to ask the questions, to be willfully blind, if you will, and not get too intrusive into the Madoff scheme. Okay, what happened? You know, I noticed in December of 2005 you went to the Wall Street Journal. What happened? Did they publish anything about this? It says you went to, I start to doubt New York SEC and contact WSJ. I assume that's the Wall Street Journal Washington Bureau. I did go to them, and I lost confidence quickly in the New York Regional SEC to conduct this investigation. I lost it very quickly. It just took a couple weeks to lose confidence in them. I could see how bumbling they were. And I was worried about my safety because the New York branch chief and the team leader knew my name. And if they were corrupt, I thought I was a dead man. And so to protect myself, I went to the Wall Street Journal's Washington Bureau. And that reporter was very senior and very good, was ready to come on a plane to Boston several times in 2006 and 2007, but I believe that senior editors at that publication respected and feared Mr. Madoff 
and they never let him get on the plane, no matter how much he wanted to get on that plane. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you for your service on this.